try my best, maybe too hard sometimes, to be original. It's important to me that I avoid doing things the way someone or other people are doing them, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. The product I'm making in the video is a leather laptop case slash document holding portfolio thing. It's meant to fit my Asus Zenbook and hold a few documents and a pan of paper and, you know, some blank pages or whatever. I put in effort to make it my own design and design it in my own way, build it with mostly my own methods. I won't even pretend that it's made quote unquote properly, but I believe it's made well and it's mine. Along with the uh, leather goods, my videos kind of follow that same thinking. I know it's not proper, but they are also mine. Of the 12 people or so that watched my previous couple videos, a couple of them offered criticism saying that they didn't really like the voiceover monologue element that I was trying to shoehorn into them. And I want to explain my thinking on this a little bit. Maybe with a couple of small adjustments, it'll be received a little bit more positively or not, uh, but that's just how it goes. As I said, I'm motivated by my personal commitment to originality. If there's one thing I want to do, it is make things my own. I'm not perfect with this. You know, we're all influenced by the outside world, but whether I'm you know, working on videos like this or the projects you see in the videos or business stuff or whatever, I strongly believe in breaking molds and doing things my own way. The world is already saturated with people doing things by convention, following trends and copying the ones that have already cracked the code to success before them. So I think it's the responsibility of creatives, innovators, the revolutionaries to say f the rules and find new ways to do things. My products and projects are not going to resonate with everyone. My video style isn't going to be for everyone either. I'm going to continue to make changes and refinements based on both my self-assessment and the external reaction, but it's still never going to please everyone. And I kind of hope it does. I don't want to please everyone. Stuff with really wide appeal is boring to me. I want the people that like my work to really like it, and along with that, there will be discontentment from the people that just don't feel it. This video is gonna be a little different from the last, and the next is gonna be a little different again. I don't have a really clear-cut direction yet, and building that will require this sort of iterative process. One thing that is not going to change is that I'm gonna continue to do it my own way as much as possible. There's a flip side to this whole originality thing, though. 
We can't just be doing things different for originality's sake. I definitely get stuck in this sometimes. It's often hard to realize from the inside when this is happening. So much of the time we have to ignore the criticism that we receive, but, and, and you know, you wanna stay true to yourself. But there are definitely cases where external feedback shouldn't be ignored. Maybe this is one of those times. I like what I'm doing with the videos, but I may see clearer someday in the future and realize how ignorant I was. I'm not afraid of that. You know, I'm gonna make what I feel, and if it ends up being a failure, I'm not gonna regret that. With all this justification and rambling out of the way, I actually have a piece of advice to roll out here. A method for developing original ideas that I want to pass on to other people. Maybe it's somewhat obvious, but maybe it can help some people out there that are struggling with creativity. Whenever I have a new project, or genre of projects that I'm getting into, I start by doing research. As everyone knows, you have to start somewhere, right? And with pretty much everything these days, we start with Google and YouTube. So for example, when I wanted to make this laptop case, that's what I did. I had to start out, I guess technically I started out by learning the basics of leatherworking, but more specifically, I had to get an idea of what it looks like to make a laptop case or folio out of leather, right? I did a basic search and promptly stopped searching and began working on the design. I'm an extremely thorough researcher and planner. Anyone that knows me personally would probably describe me as a chronic, anxious, worrier type. If I went by my nature, I would spend hours and hours looking through the various styles and designs that other people have used to produce a product like this. But in my effort to be original, I choose to do the bare minimum. I take a quick look at the basic shapes and basic requirements of the design, and then I do my best to just shut down the research process. If I continue too far into that research, I'm gonna lose track of where the ideas are coming from, right? If I don't straight up steal a design, I may end up using a design thinking that it's original, but it isn't, which would be really disappointing to learn about later on. This method of creativity, I guess, is something I call intentional ignorance. Okay, I've never actually called it that, but uh, I think it is sort of an appropriate name, maybe a title that I'll keep for it, I don't know. Essentially. You just have to collect enough information to get a start, and then figure it out yourself from there. You'll be forced to solve the problems that other people have already solved, but they used either their own methods or conventional methods, and you are using your own methods. There are exceptions to this, of course, for things that would be safety-related, for example, and there's no guarantee that your solutions will actually be original. But the more opportunity you give yourself to improvise, the more potential you have to find new original ideas. So I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent here. There's actually an argument I make against the modern education system, especially in engineering. Everything we do is taught with this structure and convention and there's very, very few opportunities for improvisation. Often, convention is kind of a requirement for engineering. For the integrity of an engineer, you have to follow certain conventions a lot of the time. But the ability to have an open mind to a variety of solutions is something that can separate an exceptional engineer from a merely good one. Creativity is a valuable skill even in the most convention-driven professions.
I've watched a stupid amount of YouTube videos in my life, and I have way too much information, and it would be really easy to simply make videos that closely mimic my inspirations. I've looked at what I really enjoy, and the general style of videos that I'd like to produce, and then I thought hard about how I could do it my own way. I came up with what you're watching now. I want to learn to make things, and making videos is actually included in that. As far as my content goes, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to make tutorials or how-to videos. There's plenty of videos like that. Hell, I learned from them. There are people out there that are making leather goods that are far better than mine, and people that are making videos of leather goods that are far better than mine could ever hope to be. Just check out some of these guys like Ian Atkinson, Nigel Armitage, Harry Rogers, or one that I really like is Equus Leather. It's apparent watching these guys that I am an amateur at best in both regards. If you want to learn how to do leather work properly, I'm not the guy to come to. I'm making leather goods and I'm making videos purely on my own prerogative. If you enjoy them, I really appreciate your support. If you don't enjoy them, there is limitless content out there, and I'm sure you can find something that you enjoy that's not me, and I just have to thank you for giving me enough of a chance to be this far into the video. Thank you for watching. If you want to leave a comment or question, you can kindly shove it right up here. If you have a comment or question, leave it below. I'd love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, all that. I want to keep doing this, uh, but it would be nice to actually have viewers other than my own mother. If you're interested in commissioning a leather item product of any kind, please message me here on YouTube or through my website in the description of the video. If you want to learn more about the product in this video, the laptop case slash folio, I'll be posting a video shortly discussing the design and construction of the case along with what I would do differently in future versions. The transcript for this video is available on my website as well, and that is dustyco.ca. Until next time.